All right, so before we get started with today's tutorial, let's just take a close-up look at this yarn from Lion Brand called Squish Stitch. Squish Stitch is part of the cover story line. There was a whole bunch of new yarns added to this line late um, in 2023, like October, November, I think they finally went live. They are some really great yarns. They're super fun. Really, 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 really good to use for things like home decor, um, blankets, really just kind of fun projects. This is a really heavy yarn. It's not something that you're going to want to use for something like a garment. Um, I mean, maybe you can make like a really cool statement piece, think like a bolero or something, but very heavy. Um, you'd need quite a bit of it to make a garment, but when it comes to things like home decor, think baskets, pillow covers, seat cushions, things like that, this yarn is perfect. All right, so Squish Stitch, if you hear me saying that funny, it's because this is a tongue twister to me. I mean, this is one of those things like, you know, you hear the Sally sells seashells by the seashore. Squish Stitch is one of those combinations where I really have to focus to not get tongue tied on. So Squish Stitch <laughs> is a number seven jumbo yarn. So for that, you're going to need a really big hook or needle. So on the label, it recommends to use a 25 millimeter um, set of needles or a 25 millimeter crochet hook. Now, that is not a size that I have on hand. So for today's tutorial, I am going to be showing you guys how to make a super cute basket using your fingers. So you don't have to go out and hunt down one of these giant crochet hooks. We're gonna use our fingers. It's gonna be really fun. Um, it definitely takes a little bit of getting used to, but I promise you can do it. All right, so in one of these huge, massive cakes, you get 26 yards or or the which is the equivalent <clears throat> excuse me of 24 meters i'm still struggling over here with allergies it's getting better the pollen count is down today thank goodness but if you can hear it i'm still a little uh raspy but hey it's fine this yarn is a 100 percent polyester which means that it is machine washable and dryable so this says machine wash gentle tumble dry low whenever a yarn says that you can machine wash and dry it i generally trust that so i'm gonna say that that is a good suggestion for this yarn um it does have if you you know if you have any polyester like polyester sheets polyester t-shirts that is exactly what this feels like those always wash and wear well so i trust that for the care instructions on this yarn now this color that i have here is called space gray the second color that i have on hand which is this one is called chili pepper there's some really 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 nice colors in this line you guys can go check them out i will make sure to put a link in the description below so that this way you can go check out all the colors and pick your own color combo for the basket that we are going to make today so this is how the yarn comes and this is what happens when you take it apart <laughs> so i already started playing with some of this and i did not bother trying to wrap it back up i just kind of threw it to the side because it's so huge it is really easy to just kind of throw in a pile and keep working from you don't have to worry about this getting tangled up like you would with a smaller yarn which is wonderful okay so the color that we are going to start with is chili pepper and that is what we will be using on the base of our basket and then we will come up the sides a little bit with chili pepper before we add space gray in okay so we're going to create our magic ring now i'm not very good at this so just bear with me right so we've got our yarn over the palm of our hand we're going to bring it around the back and wrap it around we're going to create an x like this now we're going to bring it over the top of our hand i'm going to pull my pinky out so i can hold this a little bit better and using my right hand, I'm going to put my fingers through the loop that we created and I'm going to create a loop in my magic ring. All right. I'm then going to come through this loop and I'm going to grab my yarn using my pointer and my thumb and I'm going to bring up a loop. Okay. And that is creating the chain one. All right. So we are creating our stitches exactly as we would if we were using a hook, but we're using our fingers, okay? And so when I try to do this, um, just to make sure that I could wrap my head around how to do it, it was interesting because something like a single crochet is a very straightforward stitch. I could do it with my eyes closed when I have a crochet hook in my hands. But when I'm doing it with my fingers and I don't have the motion of the hook, 
um, I found that I really had to think about the first few stitches to make sure that I was doing it right. So take it slow. I promise you could do it. It's very easy. It's just, it is different to translate the stitches with your fingers than it is when you have to do it with a hook. So just take it slow. I promise you could do it. All right, so this is our chain one. And now we are going to single crochet around the magic ring. We're gonna make six single crochet because we're going to start with the base of our basket, which is going to be a flat circle. So a flat circle, the first round has six single crochet. So what I'm gonna do is I've made my chain one. I'm gonna put my fingers as if this was my hook, but I'm gonna put my pointer and my thumb through my loop. And I'm gonna come here with my left hand and I'm going to create a single crochet. So we gotta bring that one loop up, right? You're like you're doing your yarn over and you're bringing your loop up and you're gonna put your pointer and your thumb through that loop again and you're gonna grab your yarn. You know, you, you would yarn over, right? And grab it, but we're just gonna pinch and we're gonna pull it through. And that's gonna create our first single crochet. You see that? So these first few stitches, this might be a round you might take out um, and redo a few times just to kind of get a feel for doing this with your fingers and to also get your tension correct because it is, uh, I won't say get your tension correct, but get your, your tension consistent because this does take a little bit of getting used to. So what I like to do is I like to pull up that loop and make sure that that stitch is nice and secure and everything is even and then I pull this down onto my fingers and I create like, this is like my gauge. See how I've got it kind of all the way on my fingers. That's how I'm like gauging my stitches. So I've got this around my fingers and I'm going to, again, with my left hand, I'm going to pull up another loop, okay? And I'm gonna put it over my pointer and my thumb and I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna bring my yarn again, pinch, and pull through to create my second single crochet. I'm gonna pull this up a little bit. So now I can come here and adjust this stitch if I need to, All right? So my second single crochet, one, one, two. Pull this down to gauge it onto my fingers again, using my left hand, grab my yarn and bring it up to create another loop. Put my fingers through, pinch, pull through both of those loops to create my third single crochet. I'm gonna pull this up so I can adjust. It's like, it's, you know, I don't wanna have to take this back out again. So I'm kind of adjusting my gauge as we go. <laughs> Pull this tight a little bit. There we go, bring this down, gauge it onto my fingers. So now I have one, two, three single crochet. And now I'm gonna repeat that for my final, th my final three single crochet. Okay, All right. Here's my tail. Make sure when you do your magic ring that you do leave enough of a tail so that you don't lose it while you're doing this, but then we're gonna tighten it up. Look at that, see, it just, it gets easier. If you're having trouble on your first go around with this, don't worry, this works up so fast. You could pull this out a few times just to play around with it and get a feel for it without a problem. So now I've got my one, two, three, four, five, six single crochet on my fingers. <laughs> got my six single crochet here and I'm gonna pull this loop all the way out, right? Cause I don't wanna lose it. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this tail since we used a magic ring and I'm gonna pull this nice and tight. There we go, look at that, beautiful, right? So now I'm gonna tighten this back down and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, right here. Okay, I'm gonna kinda pull a little bit to tighten up that chain one. And what we're gonna do is I'm going to take this last loop that was on my fingers, I'm gonna take my fingers out, and I'm going to pop it through that first single crochet. So this is our slip stitch to join. If we were using a hook, I would say slip, to, slip stitch to join. Oh, well, we could say slip stitch to join here, but the instructions are gonna be different, right? We have to take it off of our fingers and pop it through that first single crochet. Now, we're not turning, right? Because we wanna keep all these stitches facing the same way. So we've got this pulled through. Now, this does not count as a chain one. So what we have to do is put our fingers back through, our pointer and our thumb, and we are going to grab our yarn 
and we are going to pull up a loop to create a chain one, okay? So again, you can kind of um, squish this around to adjust your tension if you need to. So I've got my chain one, I'm gonna bring it down. And now this is round two of creating a flat circle for our base using single crochet. So we had six single crochet in this first round, Round two on a flat circle, you have to place 12 single crochet. So to do that, we need to place two single crochet in each single crochet from round one. Now, that's a little tricky because again, this is really thick yarn, we're using our fingers, so you're gonna have to kind of, you know, really, wor really work with the yarn here, but we could do it, right? So here's our first single crochet that we slip stitch to, so that's the first stitch we're gonna work in. We've got our our chain one right here, we're gonna come in here and have to kind of grab this yarn to pull up a loop to create that first single crochet. Okay, get that on our fingers and then come back here and it would be a yarn over but we're just gonna pinch and pull through to create that first single crochet. Okay, adjust as needed. <laughs> Oof. Get this back on our fingers, come back through here. So. You can kind of pop the yarn through however way you, however which way you want. Sometimes it's easier to use your right hand. Sometimes it's easier to use your left hand. But we're gonna get that that next stitch on. Put our fingers through, right? Because we're just creating a single crochet. Pinch and pull through, and that gives us our first two single crochet in our first single crochet stitch. So now I'm gonna just keep repeating that. Pop this through. Get my fingers back on here to gauge it and adjust it. Put it over my fingers, pinch, pull through. Okay, I'm gonna pull this loop a little bit long so I can use both hands. Put this back on my fingers, tighten this down, tighten this back, see? Pinch and pull through. Adjust as I need to. So now I have one, one, two, three, four, in my first two single crochet stitches. I'm gonna bring that yarn back through. Now in my third single crochet to create my next two single crochet. And pull through. All right, I'm gonna keep going around, placing two single crochet. Oops, gotta get my thumb through there. Placing two single crochet in each stitch. All right. It's definitely gives you a little bit of a finger workout, but um, once you once you um, get a feel for working with this big yarn using your fingers, it's actually really really easy. Um, but it really does definitely make you think about the stitches that you're creating differently than when you use a crochet hook. It's 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 crazy. It wasn't um, something that I even thought would be like um, anything that was going to give me an issue, but it did. I had to think about creating my stitches totally differently um, from using a hook. Writing the pattern is going to be interesting because I'm going to have to change my stitch descriptions. I guess I'll have to actually write out whoops, how to make a single crochet um, using your fingers, right? Oh, look, okay, so here I gotta kinda adjust my tension in there. Okay, I can get in there. One, two, I've got my 12 single crochet stitches for round two. Flatten this out, right? So that's something too along the way is like kind of pull and flatten it out and make sure that everything's nice and even throughout. Pull your last loop long, find your last stitch, pull that loop through, okay? Let's get that up nice and tight, okay? Again, make sure that things are laying nice and flat. Eh. Pull this down. <laughs> and now we are going to move on to round three. So I'm gonna put a chain one here and Round three, to create a flat single crochet circle, you have to have 18 stitches. So in order to do that, we are going to place one single crochet in the first stitch 
and then two single crochet in the next stitch and then we repeat that all the way around placing one and then two one two one two and we place it all the way around and that's going to give us 18 single crochet so I'm gonna place my first single crochet so I've got my loop here I'm going to pull up a loop in that same stitch that we slip stitch to to join get my fingers through both pinch and pull through to create my first single crochet coming into my next stitch I'm going to place two single crochet so I'm going to pull that loop through get my loop through my fingers through both of those loops pinch and pull through to create that second single crochet and then place a second single crochet in that stitch to create oops my third single crochet adjust those stitches a little bit make sure that they're nice and even so that is three single crochet and now I'm going to keep repeating that all the way around placing one single crochet in the next stitch and then two single crochet in the next stitch all right so I just created my last stitch so that I have 18 stitches around right I don't know if I have enough left here to come up one round of single crochet um, we're gonna try it if I don't we're gonna change this design up a little bit so I'm going to take my last loop I'm gonna slip stitch it through my first single crochet of the round so I've slip stitched and now we are going to start round four so round four will have 18 stitches just like round three because now we're going to start working the walls of our basket so it's going to start coming up this way so let me make sure that we are good and in camera and the way ah, this thing let me just tuck this under here quick that's not how we're weaving it in i'm just doing that so it's not in my way um so we've got our chain one and what we're gonna do is we are going to create front post single crochets. So we're not gonna work around this part of the stitch, we're gonna work around the post of the single crochet stitches. So to do that, we're going to push our yarn through, okay? And we're going to come around the post, all right? Get our fingers on both, and we're going to create a single crochet. So next one, push this down, Come around the post and create our next single crochet. So I don't know, guys, we might have enough <laughs> to do 18 stitches, but I don't know. It's kind of iffy. It's kind of iffy. So this is what we're doing. Change of plans, guys. Change of plans, right? Design in the making. Um, is there one more? All right. So let me grab some scissors. All right, I got some scissors. This is gonna be fun because I haven't cut this yarn yet. All right, let me, I don't wanna cut too little and I don't wanna cut too much. So let's see. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna pull this just a little bit and I'm gonna cut, I haven't cut this yet, let's see. Oh, wow. Whew. Okay. So we're gonna put this to the side. I'm gonna figure out something else to do with the rest of that yarn. There's not much of it left, but enough that I wanna use it. So I'm just going to take this yarn and I'm gonna, I, we've got our slip stitch to join and that's where I'm going to tighten it. And I'm just gonna, again, like I did with that end, trying to just loop it through this way so it's out of the way. So let's see, we are gonna get our next color. We are switching now to space gray. And let's find our end. Let's see how quickly we can find the end. Let's see, this big yarn. I've got, I'm going in on both sides. Doo, doo, doo. Where is it? Oh, 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 oh gosh. Hold on. Whew, all right. All righty. Oh yeah, yeah, ooh, it fuzzed a little. Okay, so let's see. Because of how thick this yarn is, I'm not gonna try to start in this same spot because it's just gonna be a lot of yarn to try to work over. Um, I would not recommend working over your ends. Again, I, sh I told you I'm gonna show you how we're gonna deal with this. Um, but right now, do not work over these ends because this is huge. So I'm gonna come over a couple of stitches and what I'm gonna do is, hmm, um, We've got to join our yarn somehow. So let's 
get yeah that's probably the best way to do it all right so come over a few stitches don't work in this area come over a few stitches all right take your yarn fold it in half a little bit like this and pop it through from the back to the front okay and come and bring it around a post all right and then leave your tail okay we're going to kind of pull him back this way and loop this through to create a chain one all right so now we are going to go back to working front post single crochet around each each stitch to create 18 front post um single crochet stitches all right pulling this as tight as I can all right okay so front post single crochet I'm going to pop my yarn through bring it up and around the post of this single crochet all right remember adjust your gauge using your fingers Let's adjust this a little bit more okay grab our yarn and pull through so that's creating our first front post single crochet right here pop our yarn down through the post down and around the post of the next one oh this loop got a little big let's try to adjust that let me pull this one long adjust that down see how easy it is to adjust these stitches ah oh, it's great oops in the world here I am saying it's easy and something screwy happens <laughs> all right there we go okay down and around the next one up and over here we go pinch pull it through gosh Okay, so as you're doing this, make sure you're checking your tension. Make sure that you're not making your stitches too tight or too loose. I feel like I might be making mine a little bit too tight for my liking right now. So I'm gonna be mindful of that as I go, keep going around. Because I don't want the sides of my basket to pinch in. Okay. Pop this one through. goodness let's pull this one down just a tad okay so I am just going around and I'm creating all of my front post single crochets around the 18 single crochet uh yeah 18 single crochets that we created in round three all right so I've come back over here and this is kind of where my join is and right now I have one two three four five six oops one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. I have fourteen of my single crochet stitches. So I've got to go here. I need to get fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Uh, oh well, I technically I didn't create one in that one. So fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and I've got to come back to this one to make eighteen. So fourteen. So this is where it gets a little tricky, guys. You got to really pay attention to your stitch placement. Whew. last one down and around and this is 18 so this is where that join was I'm actually gonna pull this back so it's not bulky in there and this is 18 oh gosh all right here's 18 my goodness all right so now what I'm gonna do is to reduce bulkiness with this yarn I am NOT going to slip stitch to join here and do a chain one I'm just gonna come into this first single crochet of that round four bring my yarn up and I'm gonna just create a single crochet so it's like a continuous round okay so that's the first one so now we're working in the single crochets oh, well we're working single crochets in these front post single crochets that we created of round four so round five we are going to just do regular single crochets all the way around um, 18 of them total again be really mindful of your tension so that your basket 
um, is nice and even, all right? We don't want any pinching and waving around. Waving around like, you know, the sides being all funky. Um, I hope that you guys watching me do this makes it easier. <laughs> you know, I keep saying I gotta start working out and I didn't think that it would be with my yarn. <laughs> Um, but it's a lot, it's, it's easy. This is easy guys. It's, it's, it's a little tedious, but it's easy. Oh, one of my kids must've come inside. Nobody's crying though. Yeah. All right. Let's take a look at a couple of these. Oh, hold on. Let me pull this out of it. Let's pull this out. Oh gosh. See, this basket's huge. Can you say it's huge? I mean, look at my hand in there. Look at how nice that looks. Oh my gosh. What a fun, fun basket. All right, I'm going to keep going on this round. Okay. All right, so I'm coming to my last stitch in this round, and I'm going to create this last stitch, and I'm going to move on to the next round. Again, um, I'm not uh, doing a slip stitch to join, so this is just a continuous round. So again, let's just keep going. Another 18 stitches. Ugh, you guys, I got like five stitches away from the end, and... It wasn't enough <laughs> to do 18 stitches. <sighs> All right, so change of plans. Let's see, I'm coming back to my last one. And what I'm gonna do, cause I don't wanna waste this yarn, is I'm gonna do a slip stitch edge, which means what I, what I will do here, hold on, wait, was that my last stitch? Yeah, okay, so those are my last stitches. So we're going to slip stitch to the first stitch of the round. And then, oop, I gotta pull this way out to show you guys how to do this. And then what we will do is we are going to slip stitch in all of the single crochet around. So this basket's still really deep. This is like, hmm, maybe like four or five inches deep. So it's a deep basket still, deep enough. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna pull my loop to where the next stitch is. And I'm going to pull my yarn through and pull it through that loop. Okay, and we're going to make a nice slip stitch detail right here. Oh gosh, look at how pretty that looks. Well, I think I might like, might like this better than what I was originally planning. Well, <sighs> so pull that loop so that you line up with the, the single crochet behind pull your yarn through the single crochet and then pull it through that loop. Bring that loop to the next single crochet, pull your yarn through and keep creating that really nice slip stitch edging detail for the final round. Make sure that you reference the written pattern, um, which is linked below, so that this way, if there's any confusion it's all written out for you. Um, I think I said in the beginning of this video, this is kind of uh, an experiment for me. I've never done a project like this before. So I'm kind of learning with you guys on camera because, you know, why not? It makes it fun, doesn't it? Um, so yeah, so just make sure that you reference the written pattern. I've got it linked below for you guys. That's going to give you the exact instructions for what I ended up doing because if you've been watching along the entire way with this video, you see that there was a couple little design changes. Um, you know, I thought we'd be able to add an extra round with this first color that we used, the chili pepper. And then I thought we could go an additional round on the sides of this basket with the space gray. And now we're changing that up a little bit. So make sure you, oh, look, this is perfect. It comes back perfect. That's the perfect amount of yardage to do that. Okay. So make sure that you reference the written pattern for exactly what we're doing here. But here we come, we come back to our first slip stitch. Now this is how we have to end this so that this way the slip stitches look nice. So this last one that we create, our 18th slip stitch, we have to pull our yarn all the way through, okay? And now what we're gonna do is we come to this first slip stitch right here, slide your finger under there, pop your yarn under, and bring this here, right? And now come to your last slip stitch and you are going to put your yarn right inside of the slip stitch, okay? So we're kind of 
making it look like it's a final slip stitch. See, like that. And now we have to also get this yarn back behind this other stitch so that this way you cannot see. Let me adjust that. You can't see where we started that surface slip stitch detail. Oh gosh, look how cute this is. It's, gosh, I need to drink more water. Look at my hands are, I'm, I'm dehydrated right now. <laughs> um, this is nice and deep. This is a really nice deep basket. I mean, compared to my, my hands, right? That's at least four or five inches. So this is a really nice basket. And this would be great to like, hmm, put on your living room table with, like potpourri or pine cones or something like that. It's really big. You know what? This is kind of, it's kind of huge. You could probably use this in your kitchen and get yourself like a plastic bowl to hide in this and put your fruit in it. I mean, you could just put your fruit in there already, you know, to begin with. But like, I don't know about you, but my aren't, my clementines, for some reason, every single bag of clementines that I've gotten has started going bad really, really quickly. And they start to get like sticky and moldy. And I wouldn't want that in my basket, even though you can wash this. But, you know, you could put some sort of a plastic liner and use this in your kitchen as like a fruit basket. It's really fun. Look at how pretty the bottom looks with this. Isn't it cute? Oh, I love it. All right, let me show you how we're gonna take care of these ends. All right, so first things first, what I'm gonna do with this gray is I'm gonna kinda just, cause um, I'm gonna, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? I am going to do the best that I can to weave this through some of my stitches to hide it because if I cut it, I'm just going, I'm just going to chuck it and I'd rather weave this all the way through. Ooh, oh dear. Okay. Let's just weave this around. Oh my gosh, what's happening? Weave this around and around and around until it gets shorter. All right, and then I'm gonna, hmm. Okay, this is interesting. All right, this actually helps what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna pull this down a bit and I'm gonna cut this. And what that's gonna do is it's going to get rid of a lot of the poof in here. And then we are going to take some thread and we are going to sew these ends shut. So you don't have to be good at sewing to do this. It doesn't need to be super neat. Um, you don't have to go and try and get matching, uh, like a longer needle, hold on. You don't have to try to find um, a matching color if you don't want to, just use whatever you have on hand. I am going to just sew this shut. I could do a much better job of this. It's gonna be on the inside of the basket anyways, so I'm not super concerned with this. Let's just sew it shut, okay. This little bit of fuzz is going to make me crazy. I'm going to snip that. And now what I will do is, um, hmm, I didn't think that through. What I'm going to do, let's see if I could do it. I'm going to try to weave this through while my needle is still attached because I don't want to uh, detach it to shorten this a little bit more. Come through here. And then I'm gonna come over and on the inside, I'm just going to tack this down. Oops, I knocked the camera. Can you see that? Can you show me that? Am I getting in there good? There we go, right here. I'm just going to tack this down on the inside of my basket so that this way it's not gonna come loose. It's not gonna be flopping around in there. I'm not gonna have stuffing from the yarn ending up in weird places. And it will be out of the way and hopefully not catching on anything. If you can't tell, I'm not a professional seamstress, but nobody, nobody has to be to make this work, right? Done is better than perfect. Okay, I'm just going to tie this off. I'm 
And that's it. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this. I will weave this through so that this way it's hidden. And then when I have a little bit left here, I'm gonna slide this down. Cut, pull this up. I will seam here and then tack it down. And that's it, my basket will be done. So check this out. Check this out, look at how cute it came out. I can stretch this a little bit, make sure that it's nice and even. It's so cute. I love it. Make sure that you guys like and subscribe. I hope that you really enjoyed making this basket with me. I sure did. I can't wait to go find a new spot to put this in my house.